Californians say epic. Epic? I thought it was excellent. It, <laughs> it was, was better excellent. than excellent. It's All terrific. I know is I looked at one of those things from the cliff. <laughs> it says there's no freaking way that we're going down that. And then when you got there, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as it was looking at it. Great. Oh, boy, it's exciting. All it right. really is exciting. Yeah. You must be talking about Lava South, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Lava Falls in the canyon. Oh, the first one we did <laughs> was a... We got stuck on top of a rock and just slid down and lost one of our parties. But I mean, they picked her up real quick in a, in the, uh kayak. But it was exciting, I'll tell you that. Okay, Everyone it was the most should exciting do it. Thing I've ever done. <laughs> Everyone should do it. All right.
The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. There are no limits. Extreme for people is to, to define what your limit is and then to push it a little further each time. No boundaries. To push my mind, body, and soul to a limit. It's just exhilarating. From a raging river in South America. I love the thrill of running something really hard, rising to the challenge, and being kind of on the edge. To the snow-capped mountains of the north. The end is great, because then you can look back up and go, ah, oh, I can't believe I just came down that. From daring climbs. The fact that it had never been done by a man or a woman. It was a liberation from any kind of stereotypes. To a polar expedition. It, it's indescribable. Soar with a unique group of athletes that take it to the limit and beyond. As Nike presents A Passion to Play, Women of Adventure. Water is like a dance. It feels like a dance, a dance with the river. And I would never be bold enough to say that I'm leading the dance, but that maybe I'm a strong enough partner to hold my own. I love the thrill of running something really hard and rising to the challenge and being kind of on the edge. And so that's a hard thing to pass up, but I also know that being conservative always pays. There's this conversation that goes on in my mind when I'm looking at something, A, for the first time, or B, something that's really hard. This voice that says, oh, you can't do that. You won't be able to hit the line. And so it's kind of a, um, in a way, it's a battle, and in a way, it's a conversation between these voices. And then it's up to me to sort of take control of the situation. very conservative in nature and it might not look that way on the surface because I know that I have run some very big things There's a lot of people that will crash and burn down huge whitewater and feel like, you know, they're great kayakers because they survived this hard or big, you know, big rapids. And for me, that's not the joy of kayaking. The joy of kayaking is being in control or maintaining some semblance of control and getting my boat where I want it to be. Beth Rippins, one of the world's elite kayakers, and will return to her whitewater trip in Chile in just a moment. I know what it's like not to be able to move. I know what it's like to, you know, to want my body to do something and not have it do it. When I was eight, I had a stroke and uh, it left the right side of my body completely paralyzed. And physically, I recovered from that, 
fine, but the um, emotional impact of that was very far reaching. You know, after this stroke, I felt really out of control in my life. My personality changed overnight from being what I thought was, you know, kind of an average, happy, normal life of a, you know, an eight-year-old kid to being super angry and super volatile. But I have known in retrospect that the rest of my life has basically been devoted to trying to find a different emotional experience for myself. I think I always had the, the idea that I could do something if, if I wanted to, but I, there was so much distraction in my mind with everything else that was going on, and so much frustration and anger and um, so much of a sense of being out of control that I really needed something that would, uh, you know, demand my attention. And an intense sport like this does it. And as soon as I think to myself, oh, I've got this wired, this, this is easy, I've got this handle, wham, I get slapped around, boom, I don't have it wired anymore, I don't have it. What I find when I'm underneath the water is that there's not really time to think, there's just time to respond. My awareness of what's going on does have a slow motion effect. Extraneous thoughts. There's just the situation at hand, and that's one of the things I love the most about kayaking is that there's no room for anything else but the present situation. I have this uh, symbiotic relationship with my equipment. My paddle's like a good friend. It's like it's a, it's a personal item that I'm very, very attached to. You know, when I hold another paddle, it's not my paddle. It feels warm. It feels like you know, getting in bed with in somebody else's bed putting my head on somebody else's pillow. In the boat, it's just sort of an extension of my body. It fits really well, moves the way I want it to move. I just lift one knee or twist my hip a little bit, and the boat does exactly what I want it to. Getting on top of a big, glassy wave and carving the boat back and forth like they do in surfing, and it's like ballet. It's like ballet on a wave. It's just an awesome feeling in terms of the speed of the boat and the power and the carving back and forth. It's super graceful. Now, from the sky, we take you back to the raging waters of the food. for the first time eight years ago and I knew I wasn't ready to run this rapid. So I carried my boat around the rapid. Now that I'm here with Mary, who's a really a strong paddler, and so I have some paddling support, I feel like I um, can rise to the challenge of running this rapid. game where I feel like I have to prove something to myself and, you know, that I can do it, but then this voice of reason hopefully pops in and says, you know, no, I don't have anything to prove to myself because, you know, the competition is within and it's not without and the, the whole game is really being okay with myself regardless of whether I run the rapid or not. You know, there are elements of kayaking that are very competitive, but the kind of kayaking that I like isn't competitive in the traditional sense. It happens in remote canyons, among friends, generally. 
in beautiful wild places. which is really the biggest, most dramatic, most powerful rapid on the river. About two weeks ago when I was here, um, I was seriously considering running the rapid for the first time. I've run this river many times, but in my mind, I had placed this rapid in a category of its own. stage in my kayaking wasn't up for running something of this magnitude. This is a far more complex rapid. There's a lot more uh, currents and a lot more obstacles at work here. You know, there's this great feeling when I get to the bottom of a rapid that I've thought about for a while, of relief. There's this great adrenaline rush. There's this great euphoric feeling that um, I'm sure, you know, we get other places in life, but boy, I tell you, I sure do get them with kayaking. 